racing in the Eastern Cape on Friday, our normal time slot, and looking forward to nine races on the card this time round. We'll be on the turf surface, and of course the highlight of our afternoon will be the East Cape Derby, so we'll be looking forward to that. We start off though with another exciting race, and that is a work riders maiden plate that was greatly anticipated in the Eastern Cape and always well supported, and here we have a field of 14 runners that will be taking part. My first three selections for the first of the afternoon, 10, 3 and 4. So I'm actually electing to go with the filly, taking on male opposition here in the way of number 10, just so easy, who runs for the Gavin Smith Yard. She has proven to be a temperamental sort, but she is regularly about the action. And although her last race wasn't her best, her run prior to that, when second to Val Gardena, is certainly a run that if she reproduces, she can be very effective. She is at her best over a thousand meters. We are not expecting a good run, so just so easy, could well find the winner's box. I do think that uh, she'll have to respect the likes of number three, Forbidden Affair. Another horse that's really hard to trust, but regularly pops up to earn himself checks and can do so again here. And the likes of number four, Pure Quality, who falls into the same bracket. He always seems to be lacking that little bit more to find the winner's box, but is a regular check earner and can be a gain here. Race two is a maiden juvenile plate, and we have quite a few first timers lining up here, which always makes it a little bit harder to suss out what to go with. I have gone for the first timer from the Kreef Yard in the way of number five, and that is Soft Spot. This fellow is by Soft Falling Rain, stable leg jockey Greg Sheen is in the irons. And the yard are no strangers to knowing what it takes to stepping out a horse to win on the first time of asking. He's well bred, positive comments from the yard, and I do think that he's got a shot at finding the winner's box. Another first timer, this one from the Smith Yard in the way of number six, VV Power, also got positive comments from the trainer. And the Global View Colt out of Electra Mayor is definitely great to be able to have some early speed here. Lyle Hewitson takes the ride and this has been a very formidable partnership of recent the Smith Yard and uh, Lyle aboard and I do think that needs to be respected here. As far as the third placing is concerned also a Smith inmate number one Admiral Shine. He's got the experience behind him and added to that his form is really quite decent. He's had the three runs for three placings. So in fairness, he stands a really good shot here and those first timers will have to be quite decent to beat him. I do think though that with um, the comments from the yard saying that they're expecting good runs, it could well happen. But nevertheless, those three are the three that really catch my attention here. Race three is also made in juvenile plate, but this one is for the fillies. They're racing over the 1200 meter trip. I have elected to go with some experience here and am going for number 12, Sweet the Sound, to beat a first timer number 10 lemon pepper and then another raced individual in the way of number five flower seller now sweet the sound she took on winners first time out and did an admirable job actually very narrowly touched off the running point one of a length behind fearless lady certainly a run she can build on with experience now and she does look hard to beat the first time number 10 lemon, lemon pepper is a daughter of louis the king out of a var mare, the yard say she shows some speed, they do expect her about the action, so pencil that one in. Another Smith inmate in the way of number five, a flower seller, did a good job when she also took on winners last time out running behind the very useful sound check. And I do think that though well beaten lengthwise, she's still placed that day and she should get a look in here. Moving on to race four, it's pinnacle stakes over 1,200 meters, and most definitely number one world radar catches the eye here, and I will tip her to win ahead of number four, Aqua Delta, and number three, Kimberly Star. Now, world radar on the, in the card, you see it, it mentions that she races off a rest. She does race off 84 days, but it wasn't necessarily rested as she was actually carded to race a little while ago, but unfortunately, with the move that day of turf to poly, she came out with them. Um, not suitable surface so I wouldn't think she's going to need this by any means and you've got to feel that very very well in here she is the horse to beat I do think that number four Aqua Delta has really proven his worth over the 1200 meter trip in the Eastern Cape and fair enough to say that he possibly has done slightly better on the poly but he has not run bad races at all on turf and I expect him right there Kimberly Star horse number three is such a reliable uh, fellow, a good second last time out behind Global Drummer in a merit rated 97 event. He keeps giving of his best and he really shouldn't be far back here. 
Race 5 is a pinnacle stakes for the fillies and mares sprinting over the 1,000 metre trip. This is quite an open field. Uh, I think on paper, one or two immediately catch your eye. Definitely the way of the Gavin Smith runners, which is how I've tipped them. Number three, Sugar Gum to beat number one, La Bella Mia, and then number four, Mendocino. But if you look a little bit deeper, there's horses that have ability, and although the last couple of runs have, have not been great, if they bounce back here, it could be a very interesting race. In saying that, Sugar Gum is doing everything the right way at the moment. Last time out when beating Mendocino, and the Phillies and Mares 96, she rec recorded her fourth career win from only nine starts. The Yard are concerned that she's quite a petite filly, and 59 and a half is quite a weight for her to carry as a result, but she's certainly in the right form to do it. On the other hand, her stable companion number one, La Bella Mia, nice big lady. She's not going to worry about the 61, and she is definitely going to uh, enjoy being back down to 1,000 meters. Her last run over track and trip in a pinnacle saw her narrowly touched off behind what a winner taking on male opposition and going down by only 0.1 of a length in second. I expect a big run from her as well. Number four, Mendocino, does everything except win. And once again, she really shouldn't be far off and should earn another check here. Next event is race six up to the mile trip for a merit rated 78 handicap. Number of, numbers of interest for me here, five, two, and three. Number five, Gold Rock is really holding form well and knocking at the door to try and register his first local win and his third career win. He's not put a foot wrong running a whole a uh, stream of seconds in a row, last time out, fourth behind Sailing Lizard, who's just really being a fantastic performer in the Eastern Cape. This fellow's overdue for a win, and he really should have a good chance at getting it right here. Number two, Peaceful Day, is a newcomer. He'll be representing trainer Zetsman Oersthuizen. And although his last run really doesn't catch the interest, if you look at some prior form um, in both KwaZulu Natal and Cape Town, he's managed some fair efforts. And if he can bounce back to best here, he can certainly get involved. Number three is Greek Fire, and he's also a newcomer to the Eastern Cape, racing for Gavin Smith. And the yard do say that he's put up a good gallop back home. He looks quite interesting, and they are expecting him thereabouts. And he races off recent useful high felt form, so certainly one that can get a look in here. Our feature of the day will be the listed East Cape Derby, and they'll be running over the 2-4 trip here. Quite interesting to note that the majority of the field try the trip for the first time. In fact, there's only one horse that's been the trip in the lineup, and that's actually a maiden taking on the winners in the way of Magnum Fire. So perhaps that could help give him a little bit of help, a little bit of experience over the distance. I do think that um, if you look at the best weighted column, you have to give huge respect to the fillies in the race. And I have tipped them as such, number six, Colorado Springs, to beat number five, Swazi Queen, and turn that form around on the feature race that they met in last time out, which short Swazi Queen beat Colorado Springs in the East Cape Oaks. And the first male horse I'm tipping home is number one, Yega Moon in third. Now, what really catches the eye about the fillies is how well weighted they come into the event here. And if you look at Colorado Springs, you really can't fault her form. It's not too often you see a horse that in 10 runs has either won or run second. She was so, so unlucky to go down in 0.05 of a length behind Swazi Queen in the East Cape Oaks. Slightly better off at the weights to her here and really expected to enjoy the extra, which she tries for the first time. I do think renewing their rivalry, she could perhaps get the upper hand. In saying that, don't write off number five, Swazi Queen. Her yard are also expecting her to, to enjoy the extra two furlongs here. And she's done nothing wrong having won both of her last two starts, which have been a maiden and a listed event. So certainly heading in the right direction. Number one, Yegamun, not disgraced in the Derby Plate last time. I just run out of it late behind um, Heartbreak Hotel, whom he bumps again here. It's definitely going to be a question for him to fall on grass, but again, the weights give him an advantage here. I've elected to go with that, and as honest as he is, he really should be giving it his all once again. Moving on to race eight, they'll be racing over the 1400 meter trip, and this is a merit rate of 96 handicap, and I'm looking for some value here with number six, Step Lively, taking a little bit of a chance on her, not by any means that her form is bad, quite the opposite, she really does have useful form, but she is a temperamental sort, and there's been a couple of occasions where she hasn't made it into the gates. 
Definitely has ability though from five starts. She's recorded two wins, a second and two thirds. And though this will be the first time she attempts the 1400, she has gone the 13 on Polly and managed to do her best work late to play. So I do feel it is in her scope. So if Charles and Lorber can just keep her quiet and get her into those gates, I think she could be a very interesting runner here. She does have a couple of useful individuals to take on and uh, two of them are definitely her stable companions in the way of number two, Water Spirit and three, Golden Chance. Water Spirit was an absolutely effortless winner on local debut last time out when beating called Golden Chance in a pinnacle and that definitely caught the interest. She did everything under her own steam and should be right there again on that run even though she was bounced up the ratings by six points for that win. Golden Chance comes in better off at the weights as a result to her. And this dynasty mare just can't find the winner's box. She is finishing on top of them and has finished on top of them for a good number of runs here. And it really would be fantastic for her if she could just nail it down. The blinkers go back on here. She's drawn neatly and in good form. It's hard to see her not getting involved here. Last of the day sees us staying over the 1400 meter trip in a Phillies and Mares 86 event. I finish up with the numbers of 2, 5 and 8. I think that stage dance here from the Gavin Smith yard looks to be a really lively runner. And although she hit a bit of a hiccup in her penultimate, she put that right behind her with a smart third behind a sailing ship when taking on Stronger last time out. There was a lot to like about that and drawn neatly here. I do think she's going to be a, a big contender. Number five is Encryption. She was perhaps slightly disappointing last time out, not by any means running a bad race, but she was very well in at the weights. She had a really light weight, and I had expected her to show a little bit more cheek as far as the win is concerned. In saying that, she did hold form, and she rounded up in fourth behind sailing ship, not disgracing herself at all, so not without chance here either. Number eight, Kiss of Life, is a horse that I do think can show some cheek as well. Rested after a slightly under par last, which was by no means a poor run. The aunt says she is working well. And if you look at some of her previous form, which uh, includes winning the Allo Handicap, a non-black type event, and running second to the Smart Sword Santa Teresa and a Breeders' Guineas Plate, she certainly has to be respected. With nine carded races to look forward to on Friday, the PA will get underway in race three, which is Maiden Juvenile Plate for the Phillies. And here I'm sticking with uh, my, fav my favorite and first, first selection, number 12, Sweet the Sound for a banker. So I really think that um, there are first timers in the field, so always difficult to gauge on just how good a horse she is meeting when they step out for the first time. I do think that that first run was certainly a huge run, and the horse that beats her as a first timer will have to be quite standout to do so. So number 12, Sweet the Sound, is a banker for me in the first leg of the PA. I follow up with another banker in the next leg, in the way of number one world radar she really is well in as far as the conditions of this race are concerned and with the yard feeling that she is back to best she does look hard to beat so world radar for me another banker in the pa go a bit wider in the third leg and horses one three and four will all go in the stable companions la bella mia and sugar gum for me are the standout runners here and a consistent horse like mendocino you'll never go amiss with including her Moving on to leg four of the PA, again, three selections, two, three, and five, which means the horses that may have their first starts in the Eastern Cape, Peaceful Day and Greek Fire, are certain inclusions, although I do think the horse to beat is number five, Gold Rock, and he's certainly got to go in. Next up, the East Cape Derby, and this field may be small, but there is plenty to consider here, um, al along with um, the Phillies being very well weighted here, you have to hope that they, the ratings are true and therefore the best weighted column will stand up because there's been some good performances from the male um, line up here as well. So a small field, but I think there's a lot that can happen. And even though a small field, I have decided to go in with three horses in the PA, all of one, five and six. So that will be Yegamoon, as well as the two fillies, number five, the Swansea Queen and six Colorado Springs. Penultimate leg of the PA, numbers two, three and six go in to for the leg in race eight. And that is Water Spirit, Golden Chance, and Step Lively. So 
thinking that trainer Alan Kerf's got quite a strong hand here and all three of those runners will be included. The last leg of the PA once again rounding up with the three selections as far as the Phillies and Mayors 86 handicap over 1400 is consider considered and stage dance for me a very big runner. Um, feel that you might have to respect number five encryption and number eight kiss of life and I do think those three should be enough to get us through at the back of a PA. The pick six will get underway in race four which jumps at quarter to two and that starts off with the pinnacle stakes over 1200. I stick here with my PA banker and will also be bankering number one world radar in the first leg of the pick six. Definitely go wider in the next sprint over a thousand meters, the second leg of the pick six. I just think that once you start breaking down this field, you want to add in a couple more. And when the field is only seven horses, you don't want to be leaving one out. That's generally the one that pops up to beat you. So I have gone with the field in race five and I have included all the runners there. Um, La Bella Mia definitely is a horse to include. Racine, slightly off form, but at best over course and distance. If she bounces back here, she really could be anything. Number three, Sugar Gums in good form. So is number four, Mendocino. Number five, Scented Garden has not been disgracing herself of recent. And while number six, Vodka Lime has not run to form, her local debut when finishing second to Joyful Noise points out that if she puts her best foot forward, she could really set a cat amongst the pigeons. Likewise for number seven, Delicacy, who's certainly better than her last run. The pick six just gets the one addition as far as leg three is concerned. The PA numbers of two, three, and five go in, and the extra for the pick six will be number six, and that is Danilo. Danilo has not been far back of recent. He really enjoys the trip. He's yet to miss a placing over it. In fact, has won over it, and yeah, it's not without chance here. As far as the Derby is concerned, the PA numbers, which include number one, Jäger Moon, five, Swazi Queen, and six, Colorado Springs, will be bolstered with number three, Heartbreak Hotel. I think you cannot be leaving this fellow out. He won the Derby plate in full command, and although he is worse off at the weight to horses like Jäger Moon, don't rule him out. There could still be more to come from him. Pick six gets extra two horses in leg five. The PA numbers, two, three, and six definite inclusions, and I add to them with numbers one and four. The highwayman, he's not a horse to disrespect. He's a powerful front runner who's been meeting some decent sorts of late, and though he carries top weight here, he's proven before that you dismiss him at your own peril, so he's, he's certainly got to be included in pick sixes. Number four, Norfolk Pine, is also running off very useful recent form and is not without chance at popping up. Last of the day, and again, PA numbers two, five, and eight will get bolstered by another two selections, and they are seven and 12. So here, travel and style for me becomes a horse that can't be left out, running off consistent form, always thereabouts. And Forest Fields, she ran an absolute cracker last time out to get stronger, really proving that she could hold her own up in class, and as such, she deserves some respect here. As far as the jackpot is concerned, it's exactly the same as the legs two through five of the pick six. So the middle legs of the pick six um, are the jackpot. I haven't amended anything in between. Uh, so yeah, they follow the same lines. As far as my best bet is concerned, uh, the horse that really stands out for me is in race three, number 12, Sweet the Sound. I do think that on her debut run, getting so, so narrowly touched off, she just builds on that slightly. She's going to be a, a very hard nut to crack. And for value, I'm going to take a chance with Steph Lively in race eight. That's horse number six, really hoping that she behaves, keeps her cool, puts her best foot forward. I do think that she's got the ability to make her presence felt. Looking forward to a good day's racing on Friday. Of course, again, that really excited listed event, the East Cape um, Derby to look forward to. And other than that, nine other races to really enjoy. So we'll see you there.